This is Spencer from the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Nikki Trumbo. Um, perhaps not a name that instantly pops your mind, but it will very soon with the release of Trumbo from director Jay Roach. Uh, a film, a narrative take on Dalton Trumbo's life and blacklisting and all that. Nikki, of course, is the daughter of Dalton Trumbo. Um, I want to start out by something that was briefly mentioned to you off camera. One of the things that always strikes me watching films based on real stories. What was it like for you during the process of making this film? Because I understand your family was involved, or your, you and your sister at the very least. Um, what was it like sort of reliving that story, sort of trying to maintain authenticity, sort of reigniting those memories that might have been, in this case, painful at times? Um, what is that process like? It was kind of an amazing process, and it was... Uh, uh, upending. I, I'm not sure it was upsetting, but upending, because every time you go back and revisit something, you get a new take on it. You get a new perspective on it. And um, this has been a three-year process, so I've had numerous takes <laughs> or retakes yeah. on, on, um, the, on the film and on my life. What is it like, sort of, uh, to be not only responsible for, I guess, in from your family's perspective, responsible for maintaining the authenticity, but also actually seeing yourself represented on screen. Like, I mean, Elle Fanning does a wonderful job of portraying you and your relationship with your father in the movie, but it's, it's got to be one of those things that's sort of weird, like, this, this is my story, too. I mean, in a lot of ways, it's boiled down to, you know, Trumbo, but it's, it's your family's story at the end of the day. I think it is uh, the family story. Certainly, at, at Trumbo was the family, in a sense, because he was bigger than life. Yeah. Um, but I think that's one of the things that makes this such an interesting and good film, is how the family life is brought into Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. In terms of, like, what it was like, I mean, I'm somebody who, I mean, I understand about the blacklist, but I, I was not alive during when that occurred. I mean, obviously, you know, you can compare it to the war on terror now, you can make those sort of comparisons in terms of like the witch hunt that was going on. Mm -hmm. But what was it actually like for you during all this experience? How much of everything that was going on with your father and the blacklisting and sort of the witch hunting, were you aware of? How much of it was something that was going on, but you didn't realize perhaps until later in life that you're like, oh yeah, that was something that was part of that? Or like, what was that sort of like as someone who grew up in it and what you actually could understand of what was going on around you? Uh, our parents made the decision. There were three kids, my sister Mitzi and my brother Christopher. Christopher died three years ago, and it's mm. really a shame that he Yeah, because apparently he had done this. a play and there was a documentary about yes, it. Yes, yes. Um, so the, our parent, Mitzi, was only three at the when this all began, but I was nine, I think, when it all began. So our parents made a point of telling us what was happening, what was going on, what the difficulties were, what the problem was. And um, they made that decision, I think, par uh, partly because it just seemed to make sense to them, but partly, too, because so much of the way we had to live once the blacklist was imposed was in secrecy. Mm. And how do you get kids to keep secrets unless they understand why they need Severity, to be kept? Yeah. And partly we needed to keep secrets, for instance, who who wrote what movie, because if a front put his name on a movie of Trumbo's, on a script of Trumbo's, if we blurted that out, then the front was going to be blacklisted. Mm. So we held the responsibility for other people's livelihoods. I mean, there's an interesting dynamic of, I don't know what you want to call it, growing up before you were adults or whatever. One of the interesting things also in the film was the sort of discussion. Uh, there's a scene where the younger you is riding on a horse with uh, Trumbo and sort of asking about communism and stuff like that. From your perspective, what was it like in terms of like, I mean, I guess there's an element of you couldn't do it because you were a child and your parents control what was going on with you. But was there a lot of thought from your perspective in terms of like you clearly had a streak of wanting to do the right thing that you know was 
both you and cultivated from your parents, but at the same time, it was like, life would have been easier if it was just like, I blend it in, I don't want to deal with all this difficulty. Did you have any sort of conflict in yourself in terms of trying to figure out who you wanted to be and what life you wanted to live and all that? You know, I read an article um, several years ago uh, by the son of Donald Ogden Stewart, who was mm. also blacklisted and a brilliant writer. He said it took him 25 years to go to the box of papers that his father wow. left when he died. I, I think living with a parent who was famous for whatever <clears throat> reasons is a constant struggle to try to find out, who, to understand who you are and how to shape yourself um, in an authentic way with integrity when you're kind of surrounded totally. by this person. Well, it's, it's funny, sort of one of the other kind of weird, this is a weird parallel, sorry. Um, but one of the things that I, I, I often think about is like people who are so famous that people just who are merely related to them become famous through that context. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, Bill Clinton is one of the most famous ones, and how famous Monica Lewinsky became just because of her association to him. Yeah. And it's one of those things I, I think about for you. Was it difficult coming out of this world and sort of, I mean, I don't want to say you're like stamped like Trumbo, like Blacklist, this is, this is who you are, but trying to sort of find your unique personality when you have so many huge clouds sort of hanging over you're like okay yeah you know i did live through that but the blacklist <laughs> is not just who i am you know i did grow up with dalton trumbo as my father but i'm not just dalton trumbo's daughter was that something that was challenging for you to sort of define your own life find your own path or whatever coming out of this it was i think it was i did end up doing something that i had always been very interested in doing which is uh, that I'm a psychotherapist mm. and I work with kids and families. Mm. And I think part of that interest came from having lived the childhood that I lived. Oh, yeah. I, can't, I would imagine that would be an amazing sort of like uh, case study yeah. <laughs> for, for a psychotherapist. <laughs> um, what was it like sort of growing up around a writer like Dalton Trombo? Like, um, obviously, in retrospect... He was already a legend before all these other scripts were sort of revealed to be having written by him. But what was it like growing up with somebody who has such a prolific talent? Like, it seems like, you know, you think about actors who raise children and they're always like, either they want their kids to be actors or they don't want them to be nothing at all related to acting. What was it like? Was it scary to to write anything at all? Was it scary to, um, I don't know, like it's, it seems like that is an intimidating thing to have somebody who has such a singular talent in one regard. I think that's one reason why I may have chosen a different profession entirely, far away from mm -hmm. show business. I think it would, I think it must have been hard for my brother who was a writer. Mm, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So how you, he was not just a writer, he was a brilliant writer. He was an extraordinary yeah. writer. So I just chose not to compete there. I, I don't blame you. <laughs> uh, it, it's one of those things, how cognizant were you of, or how much celebration within the family were you really able to do for some of these great successes. I mean, obviously, there's those scenes in the movie where you're all sitting around during the Academy Awards and you're like, yay! But was it something that... Um, as a whole, the family really could enjoy, or was there just so much um, fear around you guys that you guys couldn't really appreciate the incredible legacy that was being achieved as this was all going on? I I don't I know that we that it was great fun to well it was poignant to sit home and watch your father win an Oscar that he couldn't ever claim. <coughs> <clears throat> it was uh, no we we bonded around those moments as a family I think we were 
I think somehow we may have felt that we all deserved them because we were all in the thick of it. It's, yeah, I mean, the movie really paints a picture like with you guys typing the scripts, delivering everything that, I mean, it really in some ways does feel like quite a team effort to achieve this reality behind, you know, the the <coughs> facade that was him not writing these scripts. Yes. Um, in terms of... <laughs> the blacklist and communism and all this stuff, what was it like in terms of trying to define what you believed? I mean, there's an element in the film where they discuss your sort of um, embracing of um, the civil rights movement. Was, was it something that just naturally came to you because of the environment you grew up in? Is it something that... Um, I, I don't know. What was it like sort of defining what, what you wanted to put your stamp on? I mean, obviously your dad was very much putting a stamp on um, the bet. I mean, I, I, mean I, I don't want to say that like it was just purely a communist, not a communist thing because it was labor rights, all that sort of stuff. Right. Um, that was sort of his battle. What was it like sort of trying to find your feet and what you politically believed? And uh, I think it was just a natural extension of his. I know that um, civil rights for African Americans were incredibly important to him. Um, I don't know why. I mean, I don't know his own history mm. that led him particularly in that direction, except that, um, you know, it had to do with equity and, and fairness and what was just. I, I mean, I don't know what you want to class, classify that as, but, like, was it politically that you guys really were able to... Bond? What was it sort of that you are deepest bond was through? Was it through the the secret that you guys grew up in? Was it the politics of the situation? What was it sort of that really bonded you guys? Because in the movie, there is shown to be some conflict between you guys. I mean, you could say, you know, whatever reasons that, probably a multitude of reasons that there, that was occurring. But what was it that sort of really, you look back on, you're like, that is the strongest thing that I take away from having grown up with my dad. Well, I think in the family, he was the force that kept us moving, and Cleo was the glue that held us together. Uh, yeah, very much felt that way. And, um, and, you know, we just trusted them. We would get through this. From what I understand, the film was a fairly honest, accurate portrayal of, I mean, obviously things are consolidated, there's run times and stuff to worry about, so I mean, but it's a pretty accurate representation of your experience. What was it like in terms of participating in a project like this? Because it seems like there's always got to be a level of fear where in Hollywood they're like, okay, you know, we're going to recast like Brad Pitt as your dad, and now Angelina Jolie is going to be your mom, and that everything gets sort of like spun into a place that it doesn't naturally go. Was that something that you had fear of when you were approached about this project? Was that something, like, what was that sort of balance with? Because it sounds like they really did a great job of accepting your input in terms of producing the film. They were, they were wonderfully generous. Um, John particularly in inviting and including both Karen and me in, uh, in crafting his story. Well, of course, we didn't craft it. We just gave him as much information as we could and kept our fingers crossed. Um, in terms of casting, I don't think I ever thought that far ahead. <laughs> um, but when somebody said Brian Cranston, I wrote to my granddaughter. I texted her and I said, who is Brian <laughs> Pretty Cranston? exciting, and I, yeah. And she almost fainted. She was so excited. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a great point. Um, when you find out about that, do you actually go and sort of see some of Brian Cranston's works? I mean, obviously, Breaking Bad, arguably the best television show ever, potentially. Um, <laughs> I binged it. Yeah, it's. And it's, I kept saying, please don't, I don't want to watch this yeah, anymore. Yeah. Yes. It, but. Is it one of those things that you're sort of like, what, what was your sort of relationship with him? I understand you sort of had a correspondence with Elf in terms of representing you. Did you have any sort of discussions with Brian in terms of like, okay, this is, this is what my dad was like. This is sort of a mannerism of his. Like, what kind of input did you provide to him? Like that. And I think, and my sister talked with Brian a lot also. But it really was uh, the mannerisms and, you know, how he that he smoked all the time, how he held his cigarette holder, little things like that, which also brought back many, many memories that are 
what, 35 years old yeah. now. Uh, what do you want the sort of lasting or um, what do you want sort of people to take away from this? Do you want sort of a revisitation of the dangers that occurred during the blacklisting? Do you want people to really remember how amazing your dad was a writer? What sort of, what, what do you want in your best case scenario, people to see this film and walk away from going like, oh, that was neat? I want people to think twice before they accept whatever version of the truth they're given. And I want people to know that, um, that they can stand up for what they believe in. And even if it's at some cost, they, can, they, they still come out on top when they're able to hold to principles. That's a, that's a great point. I was, it was just making me think of something else. What do you think, I mean, this is hard to do because this is sort of an imagination type question, but what do you think your dad would have been like in current times? Not, not necessarily because of blacklist or whatever, but, you know, with, you know, the NSA spying, all sorts of things like that existing now, what sort of do you think his perception of our time would be? I don't know what his perception of our time would be. I know he'd be on the side of Edward Snowden and any whistleblower. I have no doubt that he, he would be on what I would call the right side of that issue. I mean, it's one of those things that, like, I mean, it's, it's little consolation, but it's kind of nice to come out on the right side of history. Like, it's one of those things I think yeah. about with McCarthy and stuff like that, and you're just like, how colossally off you were on this that, I mean, I, I think about his descendants and I'm just like, gosh, I don't know what that would be like to be like, oh, you know, Joseph McCarthy was my uh, great grandfather. Like, that's and a scary thing. You to know, think the about. book Naming Names by Victor Novosky, mm. uh, he, he wrote a book about the blacklist and he wrote a book that included people who named names as well as people who did mm, not name names and examined what their issues were and what their struggles were. It's a fascinating, a really good book. Well, I think that's one of the most interesting things in the movie is your dad, when he's accepting the Lifetime Achievement Award and how um, it would have been easy to slam it down in people's faces and being like, look who was right. But he was very, um, it was very well-balanced and sort of admitting that there was fault all around and this was such a horrible moment in history and let's just all come together and heal basically and yeah. so it's a it's a beautiful moment he put it where it belonged which was on the institutions that created the blacklist yeah. not the individuals who were victimized by it. well ho hopefully people can take away the parallels for nowadays with as you said edward Snor snowden and all I those kind so. of things. Um, thank you so much, Nikki, for joining me here. And uh, I hope everyone goes out and sees Trumbo. It's a pretty phenomenal film and story. And I, I'm glad you were able to participate in it as much as you were. Thank you very much.